working with views in the whole hog operating system. When you start a new show, four commonly used views are created for you by default. You can locate these in the views toolbar at the top of your left monitor. The default views are labeled palettes, cue list, output, and programmer. To recall the palettes view, I'll just click on it. This view quickly calls up four windows and places each in a particular location across my monitors. In this example, I have two monitors. The palettes view calls up four windows, the color directory, the beam directory, the group directory, and the position directory. Whenever I recall this view, these four windows will always be displayed in this order across my monitors. Not only that, but each window will always be opened in the same size and placement on each monitor. Of course, when you're recording your views, you can set the size and order however you like. A view does not affect your playback bar, your command line, or your other toolbars. Only windows, like the palette directories, are stored in the views. You've already seen how to open the palettes view, while the other views are recalled the same way. Clicking the queue list view shows me my queue list window. Views 3 through 8 are currently empty. Here's my output view. The next button will advance my views toolbar to the next bank of 10 views. Right now views 11 through 20 are empty. As I continue to click next, I'll cycle through views 1 through 100 and then I can return to views 1 through 10. A quicker way to do this is to hold the pig key when clicking next. This will turn your next key into a back key. Now just because there are 10 banks that give you quick access to views 1 through 100 doesn't mean that you are limited to 100 views. You can have as many as you like. Holding open and clicking view will open the views directory. If we scroll down, you'll notice that we can easily get past 100 possible views. Now let's look at how to make a view. It's a good idea to start with no windows open and then open only the windows that you like to record in your view arranged in a way that makes sense to you. Let's say in my first view I'd like to have my cue list window open on my left monitor and my output window open on my right monitor. When I open output, it opens on my left monitor, so I'll use my windows toolbar to move the output window to my right monitor. Of course, if I wanted to change the size of my windows, I'd have those tools as well. I like the way this looks and I'm ready to record. To do this, I'll hold down the record key and click an empty view location. It's a good idea to name your view, so I'll click the set key and name this one playback. Another way to store a view is to click record, then click view, and then type a number to store it to. Views also remember the options that you have selected inside Windows and can even remember a point that you've scrolled to. For example, in the view we just created, the output window had the values display on. I could have just as easily recorded this view to open the output window with sources turned on instead. Or maybe I want to have show palettes enabled in this view. Let's say I want to set up a color view that shows my color options for a particular group of lights. My color directory starts from color 1, but here I've organized my color palettes for a group of studio commands starting at color 37. For this view, I'll also call up the color picker and move it to the left monitor next to the directory. I'll need to change the size so it will show up on the right half of the monitor. I'll also want to open up my programmer window on my right monitor, maximized of course. I'm going to record this as view number 5 and then I'll hit set to name my view. I'll name this SC color. Now whenever I recall this view, my color directory will already be scrolled down to my studio command color palettes. Organizing my views can be done in the views directory. Here I can rename my views, delete views, or move views from one number to another. This window is important to remember in case you forget to name your view immediately after you record it. You see, I can't click on a view in the toolbar and hit set to name it. Clicking the view will open it. But in the views directory, I can select a view and hit the set key to rename it. The views don't execute on my monitors because the guard button is on. If I turn the guard button off and I click a view, I'm telling the console to open that view. 
This is just like clicking it on the main views toolbar. By default, new views that you create are not additive. That means if you have windows open on your console and then click a view, the windows that you had open will now be closed and replaced with your view. If you do not wish your view to close the other windows, then you'll need to set them as additive. To do this, we'll toggle the views directory into spreadsheet mode with this icon. To change a view from non-additive to additive, I'll click the cell that says no and hit my set key. This automatically toggles to yes and now my view is additive. I can change back to my normal directory view by clicking the spreadsheet icon again. For more information about working with views, refer to section 13.2 of the Whole Hog Manual. There you'll also find a really useful list of keyboard shortcuts to help manipulate your windows.